Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to another stream. Hopefully, the audio is coming in okay, and uh, hopefully, you're having a, as good of a Sunday as you can. And um, I uh, usually start with the updates, right? So let's uh, let's look at it. Uh, the um, I think the the first one and most interesting one to say uh, is. Um, a suggestion that come, came over on um, on as a YouTube comment, and I'm not gonna attempt to to pronounce the username, but uh, thank you so much for for bringing that up. And that is, uh, if you recall, I had um, a debate on whether to keep the, the the little device that you pull up. And you look at it to get the missions and kind of use it as a compass, you know, your little inventory display and um, also a health bar information. And um, I was kind of in between whether to use like a little, just a standard UI or to use like an actual physical, uh, like a little 3D object that displays all those uh, informations. And... Um, what I ended up with is this. Let's take a look. Um, so I'm just going to turn down the volume here a little bit. And uh, yeah, so let me just make this a little bit bigger. And I'm just starting with this one because I think it's the most fun of the updates. Hey, Atlantica, welcome, welcome. All right, so right now, um, what you have as an option is if you press Q, you know, for quests, um, you get this. So here's one option, and uh, it kind of behaves just like before, you know, like you have the the point of interest there, you know, if you pick something off the ground, you know, that thing lit, lights up green and tells you, you know, number one is a pistol, and number two is, you know, the rifle, and number three is, and so on and so forth. Okay, but now, uh, what I've added to my settings menu is either to use like a HUD or use this. So basically, if you change it to HUD, I can escape from this. So now if I press Q, this shows up. So basically you can have this up at all times. Um, when it's, um, so if you're like, you know, if you prefer it to be a little bit lighter on the combat side of things, you know, you always have like the weapon up and you have the, the um, you, you have the, um, the, you know, the little UI with the tablet you can choose for that if you want to have it with the uh, you know where you actually you know you 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 bring up the physical device well you know, physical and game device then you can have that as well the the difference between it is with this one is just a regular ui element you know and you can have like the the weapon up you can have other things going on with the other one it's just an overlay state basically so if you have a weapon up or if you if you if you go with that choice, and you have a weapon, if you were to look at your you know your device, it's going to put the weapon away and look at the device. So, um, one of the subscribers, I hope, <laughs> I hope he is, but um, they are, he, she is. Uh, I hope. Um, so they came up, with, you know, they suggested, well, why don't you use the device? And I was thought, you know, I kind of like the option of this one versus, you know, you know, maybe not not using that one, and then, you know, going going with this route, and um, it, just by a simple, you know, um, settings change. And um, okay, so that's that's what I ended up doing. So now you have you have the option to choose between this. And uh, like I said, in the settings, you know, to use the HUD. So the HUD, you know, I still need, there's still a little bit of a couple of, of bugs that I need to fix whenever the, like, the, the HUD shows up where I'm changing be between the, uh, you know, when I'm updating the, the, the menu option, basically. So, and along, along with that, um, um, I've also made um, since I was in the in the in the settings menu, and uh, oh, thank you, thank you, Adamski. <laughs> Glad you like it. So while I was in the settings menu, and you know, not not necessarily related to this, but I also thought of well, I should also 
do some make some changes to the um, because I had this in the back of my mind for a while to help with performance. Hey Imran, welcome, welcome. So the uh, the the change was in the settings. If you go to video, it, what it used to be before under under like uh, it was just an option to turn on or off global illumination. You know, e.g. lumen. And what I ended up going with is actually a set of options. And that is, you know, to have global illumination in all areas. So basically enable enabled everywhere across the map, only interiors or completely disabled. So what, uh, what interiors has is, let me turn the music down a little bit, but what interiors would do versus all areas Literally with all areas, let's actually take a look at that. So if I select all areas, and uh, yeah, I think the best option to look at is maybe around this bus. And um, all areas, uh, one second. One second, guys. I was just getting a call here. Um, yeah, so with all areas, literally everything across the map is going to have Lumen applied to it, like exteriors, interiors, what have you. So if I was to also like do a stat FPS, just to the, the most basic type of, uh, um, let's say, performance <laughs> uh, uh, stat. And so this is when um, everything is enabled, right, with, with Lumen. So now if I go back into settings and for video, I choose only only indoors. You can see like the jump in uh, in the frame rate uh, probably is not very visible at the moment. Let's see. So now it's around 52 ish and you can you can also see like the change in in how the lighting behaves. So let's see if I go and change this back to all areas. Uh, that wasn't a big uh, a big jump, especially like in this scene right now, because it's very simple. It's only like a, what is it like a two to, two to three frame rate uh, uh, frames per second. But um, but once you have a bigger scene, you know, like uh, we'll go and look into the main world. Um, it, 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 I've noticed quite a bit of difference. And uh, so yeah, then uh, on the settings you can uh, you can go in and completely disabled lumen. So this is this is it completely disabled. And as you can see, the, the change is is, um, is the same as only interiors, but um, with all the interiors, all the, the lumen is not fully disabled, is only the process of what's what's outside that is disabling lumen. So you know that that way getting getting some uh, some better performance and also giving a couple of other options when it comes to uh, to how this uh, to the, how this works. Uh, okay, so that was uh, that was the other update from from a settings perspective, and the third one was something uh, I think Imran you, you noticed this and you mentioned it last week about the about the motion blur. And um, that wasn't the motion blur was disabled, but what was contributing to the issue was, oh, and I see I have an issue here where uh, the device is still attached to the hand, so I need to address that. But um, and now it's kind of attached to the root. So yeah, like I said, there's still a few things that I need to 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 look at when it comes to the device being holstered properly. But um, one of the things that I did is I've added like a smoother rotation to the weapon now. So now if you like in, in here, be before it looked like it had like a motion blur to it, even though like the performance is not that great at the moment, you know, due to, you know, streaming, a couple of, you know, maybe dozen tabs or more open, uh, some content browser windows. But that was another thing that I've added was uh, the... Um, uh, kind of the motion, uh, the, the smoothness of the aiming. So when, when you like move the weapon around, uh, it was uh, it was contributing to 
looking like it was like a motion blur that was enabled, but uh, no, it was just uh, uh, the, the, the smooth, uh, the, the aiming angle was not smoothed out. Um, so uh, there you go. I think right now it's a lot smoother than what it, uh, what it was before with, uh, you know, at least last week. And uh, also the other thing that I wanted to show is uh, something that I <laughs> haven't really considered is, um, and that now you know now now that I'm doing this, I I am trying to to look at it. So this is how it behaves. You know, you have like the weapon, and you can like pull up or hide the UI, and then if you were to change this to be to not use the HUD, and you go and uh, and pull up your device. You know the weapon goes away you kind of holster the weapon and you pull up the device so kind of giving you a little bit of a different options when it comes to combat you know maybe adding some complexity to the game if you so choose to uh, but one thing that i uh that i did is is this so when you like in crouch mode and i still need to ad address the le the right arm it's kind of hanging like you're like a like a gorilla or something but um, but the 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 device and the arm, as you can see right now, it slightly overlaps the 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 left uh, left thigh uh, left uh, shin. But um, but yeah, that was another thing that I uh, spent a little bit of time on to kind of if you're in like crouch mode and you're like looking all the way down because you know people sometimes might do that, um, and you 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 know you kind of move around your. Uh, uh, your your where you're looking at, it doesn't uh, the device does not overlap with uh, with the foot or like the the uh, the knee in this case. All right, uh, so that was um, those were if I'm thinking if I'm gonna think of something else I'll I'll let you know. But those were the kind of the main updates from a you know functional uh, functional standpoint. Uh, you know the. Uh, the smoothing of the angle when you're aiming, and you know, with with the with the uh, with the rifle, the um, the uh, giving the option to choose between whether you have that as a as a HUD or you can actually use the device itself, and um, so that was that was a really good thing to do, and also the 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 uh, trying to address the the lumen part of it to uh, to hopefully increase performance. So let's go into like the main level, and we'll uh, we'll take a look at that and see how the how the thing how things change when um, I only have like interiors enabled for lumen, and um, also a couple of the new additions. I've taken advantage of the recent uh, sale that that's that's been happening on the marketplace. So I got a couple of things that uh, we're probably going to add today. That I've uh, that I've been meaning to get, and uh, l luckily with this sale, uh, it was 70% off. <laughs> so that was a good thing to uh, to grab. So we'll add that in. Uh, like I said, uh, so the 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 main well, one of them that I got is um, uh, kind of an observation tower, where I've already saved the space <laughs> for some time now, and I was waiting for this package to come out on sale. And uh, so I, I got that uh, I got that in, and uh, we'll, we'll probably work around adding that to the world. And um, also, um, just to kind of complete the town, you know, there's like a little bit of a cemetery that I've I've wanted to add for a while, but I just uh, again I was waiting for a sale to to get that in. So uh, I'll I'll show you that in, uh, in just uh, just a little bit here once uh, everything is loaded. And you know, hoping for knock on wood, no uh, no crashes from uh, with the with that uh, direct 3D uh, issue. <laughs> All right, so it's still I think it's still loading the levels because I still uh, right now I'm still I'm not gonna I'm gonna hide that. So what I've shown you guys last week with the data layers. I'm just gonna do that now, um, just so that uh, hopefully we'll um, help with uh, with some of the issues. 
uh crashing still not fixed Imran so it's um it hasn't it only crashed once this week and again the crash happens when I literally like I go to the I, uh, the, the crash that happened, I think, either earlier today or yesterday with the direct 3D issue, it happened. Well, I wasn't doing anything. I literally just went to the kitchen and came back and th that message popped up. So nothing was going on at the moment. And uh, that's why I am. I have no idea why that happens. OK, so just to help with this, I'm just going to uh, unload a few of these levels just so that uh, hopefully it might uh, might not make it uh, too, too intense on like, uh, you know, from the performance standpoint. We'll see. Hopefully it helps. I'm not entirely sure if it does, but, uh, you know, here's the hoping. Okay. And uh, so here we are. Uh, we're back in the world. And I wanted to uh, to show you where is that uh, that area. Well, actually here is that uh, I think I might have worked this on a previous stream, but this is kind of the area where I want to have that observation point. It's kind of a central point in the map as well, so that's that's why I wanted to uh, to build it out over here. And uh, you kind of you can kind of see around the map a little bit. Um, and so this is where that point is going to go. And as far as that uh, little thing that I mentioned with the cemetery, that's just like right here. So it's kind of like in the corner of, of the town. And uh, using that uh, IA scatter tool, I managed to, you know, place some uh, gravestones as, you know, they would be placed to some extent in a cemetery. And, uh, you know, kind of surrounded it with a little bit of a, this kind of, uh, uh, this mega scan. I would, you know, like rock wall type of thing. And uh, you know, just just added that in there. And so that's uh, that's one of the updates. The other one, um, I did get a few uh, other packages off the marketplace that again were on sale, and uh, some of them contain these like little um, I wouldn't call them shacks, but like these little um, structures, you know, like like barns, like little uh, sheds, uh, you know, so th that's that's how they look. So if I was to show you, I've added a couple of them in here. And uh, let's see, where is the, not levels, but um, data layers outliner. So this way I can show you some of those, uh, the, the levels that I've unloaded. So let's just load these real quick. Yeah, so you know something like this, you know, like little carports. Um, also, I've uh, updated some of the fences in here, and uh, to to give a little bit of a more more of a worn down type of fencing. You know, a lot of them were just really brand new, and uh, I just wanted to uh, to add a little bit of uh, kind of real life wear on these. And you know, some of these have like uh, you know with with the lumen. It's pretty nice to have that interior lit up. But uh, let's jump into game mode and I'll show you uh, what I meant with uh, changes in um, um, in um, in how the how the lumen is, um, you know, kind of the lumen settings for the for the world. Uh, so I think I'm just going to unload. No, maybe it's going to be OK the way it is. So I'm just going to unload that level. OK, so right now everything is enabled. Let's uh, let's jump into the let's jump into the game. All right. Uh, so in here, uh, as you can see, everything is enabled Lumen-wise, and you know, with uh, considering you know everything that I have open, uh, you know, not the best frame rate, you know, 36, 37 frames. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and in the settings, I'm gonna uh, go into video and GI options, just set up to all, all interiors. 
So as you can see, the, the frame rate got up to like 40. And uh, of course, usually, you know, with, with the outside, especially when it's like in a forest area, um, you know, lumen is not that big of an, you know, visual impact, so to speak. You'll see the difference when lumen is disabled here, you know, like when you look at the interiors from, from a distance, right? Because, uh, so that's how it looks. And if I, if I turn on lumen or like if I turn on all areas, you'll see that you can, you can see like the kind of the shading, the darkness inside of the, the buildings. And uh, let's actually go and hopefully view that a little bit up close. And I think at the moment, the, um, let me turn this on a little bit for the audio. So right with, uh, with Lumen, you know, you, you can, you can see how the, the interior sh um, lighting looks, you know, when everything is enabled. And now if I was to uh, to turn it off, you get the boost in performance. But yes, from, from outside, it looks like, oh, you know what, this one uh, doesn't look so good, you know. It does look like, you know, the the, uh, the global illumination lighting is, is disabled. But once you enter that, uh, and I, I think I have something going on with the collision here that I can't enter this uh, this uh, warehouse. But I am inside the post-process volume. And in this post-process volume is taking into account lumen. But at, at this point, once you're inside, a lot of the stuff outside is going to be, um, you know, disabled, basically. Well, not, or, or maybe unloaded, cold as well. So, um, so you can get um, the kind of the, the lumen in, in, in the interiors. But um, hopefully that will help with uh, some of the exterior, you know, overall performance in, uh, in the game. And uh, so that's kind of uh, that's kind of what I have uh, thought about doing for the uh, for, for you know helping with uh, with some of the some of the performance uh, improvements. So yeah, you can see out here, you know. So right now, I believe yeah, we still have the settings as uh, only interiors, and you can see like inside here, you know. Yeah, it looks like Lumen is disabled. And this will be mitigated with like a door, you know, like you would have to open a door to, to enter. But then once you're like inside of it, yeah, everything looks like, you know, Lumen is there. But then once you're outside, no Lumen. So uh, trying to uh, help a little bit with performance uh, uh, in, in that regards as well. And uh, and like I said, you know, once, once you're outside, the, you know, Lumen does add you know, quite a bit of uh, nicety <laughs> looking to it. So let's see if I was to uh, to say uh, all areas, you'll notice that yes, you know, you have some like nicer uh, nicer shadows. You know, kind of like the bounce lighting, but uh, but yeah, you you do get a, a drop in performance when you when you go this route. So having that option to turn it on, turn it off or on uh, for exteriors. Um, from what I can, um, from from my testing right now, it seems to be to be helping. Okay, uh, so that's um, that's some of the updates. Uh, apparently, right now it's not complaining. It's complaining about this texture stream pool, which I actually thought I uh, did. I delete that settings file. Um, dot uh, pool size I believe is what it was let's bump it up to 10,000 okay so it's not showing the the one with uh, expect uh, very bad performance okay well we'll see um, like I said hopefully we're not gonna get any of that any of that crash happening and scalability everything is on high which is which is good all right uh, so as, as I was saying, um, 
uh, as far as the level goes, just some some tiny changes that I've made. You know, kind of this outcropping over here. There there used to be like this, just this this lonesome type of, um, you know, cliff so to speak, and I didn't really feel like it was it was fitting so well. So I thought, you know, I've, I'd add something like this along uh, alongside it. Uh, the this little um, this little all cropping, you know, kind of maybe you know wind sculpted or whatever over the years. And yes, okay. So those were some of the updates, and uh, I think, well, well, like I said, what I wanted to do uh, for the rest of the stream is maybe work on uh, on this little area here where that observation tower is going to go, and there's going to be a couple of a uh, couple of missions around that, and. Um, yeah, let's uh, we'll we'll see what uh, other troubles uh, we can <laughs> get into. Let's uh let's go ahead and um uh, and I'll I'll bring that in. I believe the level instance is there already. So let's do level uh instance. And if I recall how I named it. Lookout tower. There we go. All right, so for the lookout tower, what I did is I've actually broken it down into like an exterior and an interior, just like we've looked at it in the, in the past, where the exterior is rendered from on a on a higher distance grid for the wall partition, and then the interior is rendered on a really sh you know short distance grid. So that way, it's only once you get up close to it that uh, that everything is uh, is visible. And of course, the the other reason that I've broken it down is the the part that I was interested in with the lookout was the actual structure building itself, not so much as the interior assets, because I already have a bunch of those interior assets already used in the project. So I don't want to, you know, double tap it or like, you know, use uh, use the same, you know, use different things for the same, you know, like a sink, uh, you know, five five different sinks you know i'm just going to use one sink or like a bed you know i can ha i have a few varieties of beds yeah i don't i don't need another one from from this separate uh, package so the one that i was interested in is uh is this one here so this being like the the lookout tower and we'll uh we'll jump into game mode just to uh to do some testing on the collisions i've did some testing already and uh, and things look uh, look pretty good and but uh but yeah this was like the the main thing that i was interested in and uh you know of course like uh inside looks it looks really nice with with lumen and all but um but yeah let's uh let's jump into game mode i'm gonna bring uh, the player start from wherever it was i think somewhere around here if i recall correctly yeah there we go Oh yes, and uh, so, uh, since we're in this area, something that I forgot to uh, to bring up. This is something that we worked on last week. These these roads. So what I what I did do is uh, I uh, I kind of uh, worked at uh, you know blending these together a little bit better. So this is you know instead of having that weird bend in the road that was also kind of stretching out the textures, I just did two sections. So like one that goes straight this way and one that goes this way. And you know, worked a little bit on uh, blending how the how the roads meet each other. You know, like this dirt road, how it meets with the with the asphalt. You know, added a little bit of uh, of a transition there. So yeah, that was uh, forgot to mention that. All right, so let's move the um, the player start. If I can find it, here it is. And I thought that I actually, oh, maybe I didn't. So what I like to do is uh, when I move things around is just uh, uh, cut and paste, <laughs> basically. So I just do uh, like the cut and then the paste here. So there it is. We have our little little guy here. So let's jump into game. And uh, and we'll take a look. The other thing that I wanted to add is uh, let's also add a binocular so we can we can kind of see how it uh, how things look around uh, around the world from from the 
top of the um, th this uh, this observation tower. I'm just going to kind of place it right there. All right, so let's jump into game. All right, there we go. A pretty quick load once I don't have to load all the levels. So that's uh, something that I'm uh, I'm thinking about doing. Maybe uh, not not load everything, um, but we'll see. All right, so let's pick up the binoculars. Yeah, so the the collisions look look really good on uh, on this. Uh, I've actually looked at the project before buying it, and again, uh, it was it was like 70% off for for this particular developer, some of his packages, which were uh, was was really good. And I'm trying to figure out what which one was the okay six was the binoculars. Okay, yeah, so things uh, things are looking pretty good from uh, from all the way up top here. You know, kind of using these binoculars. Uh, one thing that I'm not really happy with is these like that uh that thing in the background that i shown you a while back well i do like it i think i might want to lower it down a little bit it looks fine from the ground but once you uh once you change the field of view like you know looking at it through a binoculars it uh doesn't look so good out in the distance i think it's also like the alpha of it like you can see up top here i think if i can refine that a little bit make it a little bit uh like work uh, work with the alpha a little bit. I think it might make it look a little bit better. So yeah, uh, there we go. All right, so let's continue up here. We'll see how things are looking. And we'll go about kind of renovating this space and just uh, uh, just adding adding things to it that you know, like I said, I already have, so I don't have to like. Uh, use the other ones uh, from this package. But yeah, all the way here at the top, uh, things are looking uh, things are looking pretty good. You know, once you get the once you equip the binoculars, you can kind of see things on the map a little bit better. Uh, the the houses are not there because I just uh, I've un I haven't loaded them. But uh, but yeah, seems like the textures are looking the Tesla the texel density looks okay, you know, kind of down here where this little village is. Still needs some work, of course. But uh, yeah, the warehouse. They can actually see the guy over there, which was that uh, like all the way up that that back there in the distance. Okay. So let's see, right now it's performing pretty poorly again. I have a, quite a lot of things going on. So let's see if I was to uh, to go into settings and turn it off, like all the interiors. Uh, yeah, so that, so you can see this is kind of where the big, bigger difference comes in. Like right now it goes to like, you know, 37, 36, 37 frames per second versus if everything was enabled. all areas it's about 32 33 so you know kind of a f around a five-ish uh, fps increase in this case and uh, so i think that's uh, uh that that definitely works you know it helps all right yeah so the the collisions i'm really digging the collisions like i said this this package is like ten dollars was a steal <laughs> Uh, okay. So with that said, let's go ahead and uh, add, and add some of the some of the interiors to this uh, to this uh, environment here. Let me hide this. I'm not sure why I kept that up. Um, since we already see that at the top. Okay. Uh, so this one was its own little level instance. And what we're going to do is just duplicate this. Uh, actually, I don't think I can duplicate it like this, but I can just like Alt-Drag. And then, so this one's going to be 
lookout tower exterior and this one's going to be interior all right so for the interior i'm just going to use this as a reference for now there we go actually you know, since i moved it it's going to be loaded a little bit on, off to the side so there we have it I'm going to keep a couple of the assets from here because some of them look uh, look really nice. But, you know, stuff like, you know, this map, I'm not going to keep it because, you know, it definitely references something that is not this map. And uh, so I'm not too interested in that. But, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be adding, you know, my, my own beds in here, you know, kind of, um, you know, the, the binoculars, I already have them. So I'll add those in. There's definitely a lot of uh, a lot of great assets in this package, you know. Uh, so maybe not not removing everything, but uh, you know a lot of things that are a little bit more, you know, too identifiable, um, you know, not so much related to to the game itself. I'm gonna be removing. Uh, so yeah, uh, like I said, uh, a great uh, great package. All right, and uh, also down here, I'm just going to add, you know, one more level. And this one's going to be, let me do this here, and I'm going to try and make it at 100 so I can move it a little bit easier. And this one's just going to be some props, you know, that are kind of sitting around the bottom of the uh, the bottom of uh, of the tower. So there we go. I'm trying to keep them all into their own separate levels. And uh, if you if you recall, on the world settings, I have these uh, on the world partition. Let's see where that is. World partition here. Uh, where did I put it? I thought it was I thought it was on the world settings. Am I mistaken? Let me take a take another look at this. I thought this is where the where did I have that? Oh yeah, there we go. So on the grids, my bad. Um, so on the grids, you know, uh, I had these all these grids to for things to be rendered at a closer distance, at a you know higher distance, and uh, so large assets is going to be the one for the tower itself because it you know we want to be able to see that from a distance. All right, and then we have medium assets, and then small assets is going to be the stuff for, you know, like this stuff at the bottom, you know, interiors, this level here. There we go. So that way, you know, this one, the tower could be seen from maybe a far away distance, but you know, stuff on the bottom, you know, those little assets, the, uh, you know, interior stuff, we only want to see it when uh, when the player is up close. In this case, it might be just as close as the bottom of the bottom of the tower. All right. So now let's uh, take a look and uh, and see how I want to adjust the interior. Uh, another thing that I wanted to add since we're here. And this is this is going to be an interior uh, uh, area. Just wanted to add the post process for that. So for that, I'm just going to copy one that I already have, and uh, it will be easier to just uh, kind of move and I uh, place around. So I'm just going to I copied that and I'm just going to paste that here. Hopefully it. Pasted it. Oh yeah, there we go. Pasted it pretty good. And uh, and the other thing that I forgot to mention is with uh, with the settings, uh, they get saved to a save file. So basically, if uh, if I go back into the game now, uh, they uh, they got saved as a, as you would save a save game. And uh, so when you click on one of the options, you know. For example, you wanna you wanna just see the HUD and not the device. That gets saved 
to a save file. So the next time you go into the game, that's you know your preference, so you have it saved. And you don't need to click like apply settings or anything like that. It's like um not sure if you call it like real time or like uh I've seen you know uh different games do it differently. So some games, you know, they do it, you know, once you once you change the settings, they save the setting. And that's that's what I'm doing basically. Some games have it as a like an apply settings and um all right, so let's try and adjust the post-process volume here best we can and position it. All right, so there we go. We have a little bit, it's a little bit brighter once you, uh, once you go in. I felt that it was, it was a little bit dark with just the standard, but, uh, but this is kind of what I wanted to, to have. All right. So let me let me try and position this post process volume as best as I can. Uh, I think that's that's pretty good. There we go. It's encompassing the entire cabin. So yeah, you know, once you enter, you know, it lits up a little bit. I've been uh, I've been looking a little bit onto some of the other settings that I have for lighting, you know, just to uh, to see how things look. And of course, you know, once you uh, once you change it to like uh, to like sunset, it's it's kind of a mixed bag because you know in certain areas, yeah, like this one, you know, with the sunset because it's high up, it looks it looks nice. You know, I kind of like that. But um, if it's like somewhere down in like the valley, it looks a little dark. So I am not, you know, and you know, 100% on this. That's why I kind of like the daylight. So you know, areas like this, they they look they look good, but uh, uh, you know, overall, <laughs> it's kind of a, it's it's hard to uh to make a choice, you know, um, you know what looks better from, you know, with with the different time of day and of course you know you know thinking about the positioning of, uh, of everything else uh, yeah I could potentially like rotate the rotate the the the, the sky a little bit you know kind of just uh, to move it this way and uh, so that way if uh, if you were to be if you were in an interior let's see if I can if I can get it to shine like right over this ridge. You know, so if you were like inside the apartment, it would still look pretty good, actually. I mean, not too shabby. But, um, but yeah, since these are like lower points on the map, they don't look as good as the higher points, especially like the interiors in the higher points where, um, you know, like this one, like the this observation point. Like I think this one looks uh, looks pretty good, with uh, with like a sunset setting that I currently have. It doesn't look bad with the daylight either, but uh... <laughs> looks better than the Far Cry Five elevated hunting lodging. But thank you, Alanica. Uh, yeah, it's um... now that I think about it, I think the only place that really stuck with me when it came to the observation point is days gone because again you know i kind of go back to days gone and um because overall like far cry 5 was a pretty flat-ish map you know um there were a couple of a couple of regions where you like would would climb up you know to some some of these points but um days gone had the that location the um, because that was like your base, right? With uh, um, your kind of your your main base in one of the one of the areas. It was, um, you know, this was kind of a focal point, you know, and there were there were some cinematics around it and everything. So it's like, it it really stuck with me, <laughs> and uh, and like I said, that's why I've I've made this this uh, this location here, this outcropping months ago with with the hope of this package coming on sale at one point 
and I was waiting for a sale, I was waiting for a sale, it was like 30% at one time, 50% at one time, and this time is at 70%, so I was like, okay, no, this is it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, but anyways, let's, um, I think it, uh, I think it looks uh, uh, pretty good, you know, like if you look at it from the outside, and then, and then inside as well, but, uh, but I just wanted to, uh, to get in here and kind of, um, you know, change some of these things around and see, uh, um, see what I want to keep, uh, what I want to get rid of, what it's not really needed. Now, just from looking at it right now, it looks like it's a little bit, uh, there we go. That's, that's about where it should have been. I kind of felt like the rug was under the carpet or under the under the flooring. So there we go. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, get to editing. As you can see, there's like uh, there's like a lot of stuff in here that uh, that I don't really uh, really use or um, have use for, you know. And also trying to uh, to keep some of these textures low. Like I have two of these carpets uh, that are, you know. Uh, an extra, um, an extra, you know, two draw calls that I can just don't really need. Maybe I can just add add one, and that should be fine. You know, like a um, one of those anti-slip rugs that I use in other locations as well. Um, yeah. So also, you know, this stuff here, it's uh, uh, not really needed. I might, I'm gonna look at this and see because it'd be nice to have like the the name of the town here. You know, kind of um instead of this so so that could be pretty cool you know i want to remove this part because it's not you know america based location type of thing uh this could be kept because it's uh pretty generic it doesn't really uh doesn't really uh, have anything in you know particular but you know stuff like this uh i would want to remove you know maybe camera um so yeah, let's uh let's get to it. This stuff I want to keep. I really like this one here. Uh I might I might use it in some of these some of the other shacks, you know, kind of like the the little village around uh, around the map. Uh you know, like there is a really cool looking axe. Uh let's see what else. The radio, I think I might have some other radio that I was using. If not, this is actually a really good looking one. Like I said, the, the package looks looks really nice. But yeah, some of these boxes I want to replace with uh, some of my uh, other boxes that I'm using. You know, this is actually pretty cool. This, uh, oh, it's actually got the cloth with it. So I'm assuming these could be separated to use in other places. Okay, that's cool. Like I said, the, uh, the oven and a lot of these assets I already have. From that residential housing and uh, I plan on using those uh, the same the fridge itself this is actually really interesting because I do have one fridge that I use across the map you know for like in residential interiors but this is actually kind of good to have because this could be used in uh, like I said some of those those little um, those little shacks those uh, kind of the, the villages like this area around here some of those interiors those could uh, that could make very good uh, use of it there. Uh, let's see these ones. This one's a stack, which is nice. So this could be very useful. And the forks and plates have some really good detail to them. So I might combine some of these, like uh, use. Um, use these in some of the other locations on the map. All right, now this one here, like I said, it's kind of, I am not entirely sure where this one is as a location. It looks like Wilmington maybe, Marble Mountain. Seems like somewhere in the States. But, uh, but this one I am not gonna, I'm probably not gonna use. Or I'm just gonna use it and replace the, the map with with nothing. So this one here, 
let me see this is the material for it so this is the map like this is the low the texture file so it looks like franklin county i'm not entirely sure where exactly this might be i'm sure ah uh, maybe delaware i mean wilmington i'm not yeah i don't know Uh, Atlantica, are you going to have any kind of crafting? Um, I was I was planning on it at one point, but um, I I decided not to, uh, just just to the added complexity and it didn't really um, I didn't really feel like it needed it because you know the main thing was also the kind of the light UI that I want to have. Um. You know, maybe it could be something done through that uh, through the device. Like you could scroll to a separate screen and then craft something there. Uh, but but not at the moment, no, and not for the first release, probably. the The other thing is, I I am not thinking of anything that can be crafted. You know, for the kind of the purpose of the game and the missions that that's uh so i'm i'm probably just gonna just gonna have it as a okay you need this item you know you can find it here as a separate mission type of thing and not just you know you can grab you know five different items and you can craft this yeah uh okay so now it's a matter of yeah so see this is a pretty good uh Pretty good little communication device. That's uh, that's a really good looking assets as well, and uh, and I do like that. Uh, you know, some uh, some cleaning things around here. I actually might end up using a bunch of these into like the residential areas because they they do look really good. And they have a they have a little bit of more of a worn worn out feeling, or worn worn down you know kind of used feeling. Then uh, let's actually exit out of this. Then maybe some things in here. Like if we were to look at this kitchen, this is a lot of really like you know this is the the generic fridge. You know it's got some some wear to it. That's pretty nice. But everything else is kind of like. A little bit too brand newish, <laughs> and uh, so I might uh, like, for example, this this stove here. This is like just rolled off the assembly line type of thing. Uh, seeing there's like a little bit of a weird refraction in that glass, so I'm gonna need to look into that. But um, but yeah, I'm just gonna need to make a decision on you know like these plates are also like everything is brand new, so. Um, yeah, I guess I need to to look at it a little bit longer. This this particular level um, can be optimized quite a lot because it's got a lot of like individual assets. When you know uh, this could could be, if you were to put it in a, a pack level actor, you know a lot of these would just be instances. You know, so you're looking at at least you know 20 draw calls uh, gain just with the, with the plates, maybe even more, uh, considering there's like number of few dozen plates in this in this uh in this level so yeah but um but this is like one of the um, uh one of the packages that i've been using for like uh furniture so the one thing that we can do at least is well the tiny things i'm gonna have to uh to look between like these these two packages to see which ones to keep but um, at least for when it comes to the beds, at least I can have some uh, uh, something that's a little bit unified. And so this one is one of the beds, and I wanted to replace it with. Uh, let me see where is that one bed that I had. Kind of replace it with this pull-out couch because I'm like using this in in other places as well. 
just like that. And I'm going to remove these mats as well. Let's see, try to position it uh, on the floor. There we go. And, or let me see, how would it look? If I was to place it like it was placed in this corner, and you know, also to some extent, is kind of changing things and moving things around so that they look a little bit different than the original package. You know, uh, yeah, I'm not. I don't think I'm gonna need the typewriter here. Some of these I'm going to remove, kind of these really identifiable type of stuff. These ones, these ones I kind of like, so I'm going to keep those there. Um, I'm going to replace the lamp with uh, actually <laughs> one of the lamps that I've made. And uh, probably going to get that off of Sketchfab because that's sometimes it's the easiest way to uh, to get things off of there. So that thing is there. Yeah, and even even in this package, there's there's going to be definitely uh, once this is turned into a pack level actor, uh, it's definitely going to help with uh, with the performance. Just uh, from the aspect of a lot of them being. Uh, repeated, you know, like a lot of uh, a lot of these assets uh, having multiple instances, uh, you know, putting these into like a pack level actor. It's going to help. All right, so there we go. Move some things around, you know. These these cabinets look really good too. I'm so torn. This this is so hard sometimes to uh to try and optimize games because they a lot of these packages they all look so awesome and you want to keep everything inside them but uh yeah i get it you, you can't like do that every time again a really good this is this is a really nice looking microwave and you can actually like textures are really well done and yeah that's the difference between like a really nice uh you know marketplace package and and some that might not be so good. As, as I was saying, you know, like this particular asset here is probably this one. So there's at least two instances, three. I'm kind of wondering if these are probably just different materials with the same uh, the same mesh. So yeah, I wish there was like a little a uh, way. I'm not sure if this is possible but let me take a look at something i thought there was a way that you can see this as a mini map but uh, i'll have to look into that because i could take a screenshot of that mini map and actually just use it at this as this uh this texture so it's something to uh to look at all right, so let me delete this and we'll replace that with uh, with actual the, the actual binocular, like the interactable binocular. There we go. All right, so this particular one, I believe, it's uh, seems to be just one single asset. Yeah, so looks like 
it's just one single asset. What I'm uh, this is gonna be a little bit tricky. I'm not entirely sure if it looks like this one's a separate part of the mesh, so it's not. Uh, or is it? I'm just wondering if I can use this one to to set this up. So just to make this the name of the town itself. So let's take a look at that. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna export this one. And we'll bring it into Blender and then a little bit into Photoshop. Import FBX. All right, so luckily it looks like this part of of the thing here is is a separate mesh, so that's good. I don't like the fact that it got imported with uh, with a bunch of like weird uh, uh, sharp edges, but I'm gonna try and remove this stuff here like that. Yeah, I'm just gonna need to clean the sharpness. There we go, that's a little bit better. Okay, I think that's gonna look a little bit better once I export it. Let's also fire up Photoshop. Okay, so this one I can keep, as I was saying, you know, it's pretty um, just generic. But the rest I want to remove. And I think everything that we needed to do in here, we've done. So I'm going to go ahead and export this. And let's reimport this asset. Okay, well, what are you complaining about with the material? Oh yeah, sometimes this happens, but fix that there we go okay so it's got like a little bit of a splotch here from the texture which is fine it just kind of like something was was glued on maybe I could have kept like the little uh, the duct tape but this is kind of what I'm interested interested in as well so I want to add to that uh, actually I did not yet export that texture Let's export this one and we'll bring it in here. And maybe we can, though, um, maybe we can arrange some of the letters. There's quite a few number of letters. So we'll see if we can make it match. All right, let's, uh, let's bring in this here. There we go. All right, so uh, back into Photoshop. Let's see, just trying to recall the spelling. 
Lakeview we have. We're pretty close, I think, Lakeview Haven. I think we have all the letters. Some of them, they seem to be just hand-drawn. So I'm hoping that we can, uh, well, we have an L. <laughs> we have an A. So maybe we can do a little bit of cloning and just place some things around. We have, uh, we don't have a K. We have a W. We have an I. So maybe we can fashion out a K out of one of these. All right, let's, uh, let's do it. Yeah, we, we can get the V out of the W. We have an E. We have the N. Yeah, so this is going to be a little bit of a, also some Photoshop work here. Well, let's see how this is going to turn out. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, clone. Let's duplicate this layer here. And we want to start with the A. Uh, maybe, actually, I think it might be just easier to to copy the uh, copy the um, the letters. So kind of like this. So it'd be there. Then I'm trying to think of the K. How can we make a K out of one of these these letters? Let's leave that, let's do that last. So we have the E. Come on. <laughs> Good thing we got the W right in place. Well, actually, we don't have it in place. It should have been like all the way back here. All right, so let's move that all over. I forgot about this. All right, clear via copy. So there's our W, then we have an E. So we can duplicate this one. View, and then we have the I, we can use that. I think we can uh, we can make this into a W into a V. See if we can uh, if we can cut some parts of it out. Kind of like that. That could work. So lake, this is going to be the V over here instead of this W. And let's try and remove some of this stuff now. Uh, yes, clone it.
Try and get some of the scrungy areas as well. Make a view. And I think I, I can just leave it as that lake view. I don't need to do like the whole lake view. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what uh, what ChatGPT would look, not ChatGPT, but like uh, you know, what is that? Uh, uh, it's it's kind of a mixed bag with like the the AI imaging generating tools, because uh, oh yeah, there's like these needs to be a little bit closer together, but that should fit there. Uh, they they don't do so well with uh, with letter Adamski. It's kind of kind of interesting. But uh, but so you have it. So I think I can say just Lakeview Fire Department. That should should work. And all of these, uh, I guess I can't really do it. But I need to see which which one of the blend modes works a little bit better. Mm, I was hoping that the maybe multiply, but with multiply. Mm, yeah, I think normal is going to be, it's going to work just, or darken. I think darken works better, but I need to remove some of those behind it like that. Okay, I think that's going to work. I just need the K. <laughs> Why can there have been a K? Uh, yeah, uh, I can do the, because, I mean, at that point, I could have done, like, the entire thing, but uh, it's already pretty well done. Like, the um, the wear around the text is, is nicely done, so um, I think it's, it shouldn't be too difficult to uh, to come up with, with a way to do a K up in here, you know. And my thought right off the bat is just going to be this F. To, to try and use this. So let's see if uh, if that can be turned into a K. Let's see. So darken. Leaf. <laughs> oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> that'd be kind of. I mean, that'd be kind of fun thing, right? I mean, it'd be it'd be a fun thing to have. Just a just a lake. All right. Now I should have labeled these. Which ones? Which? I'm guessing too late. I think this one's the F. All right, so let's try and make the K. The main thing with this one is like the wear, like it really looks like it's charcoal. I, I know you can probably do it with uh, with uh, with the letters, but I'm just not that good at Photoshop. But I think, you know, just doing something simple like this could kind of turn that into a K. There we go. And let's just uh, fix this over here. If I can figure out which one, which one of the layers that is on this one. I just didn't select it. There I got that. Mm, that was a little bit too much, maybe. I was just trying to uh, to trim this. Come on, should have labeled these layers, but. Just getting a little picky here.
there. Okay. All right, I think that's going to work. Let's go ahead and save this. And I think we we got it uh, we got it done. And I'm gonna go ahead and re-import it. And the one that it is, it's this one. All right, let's take a look and see. There it is. Okay. So now we have something that's more of a of this area. <laughs> I think these are pretty generic. You can't really read them. Uh, it does have like a United States of America on there. So let's try and remove kind of some of the locations, kind of terrorism. I don't care about that. What that, that was the same thing. Let's see, these finders, they look pretty generic. So nothing. Uh, and those also pretty generic. I said I wanted to delete this camera because I don't need it in there. These reports off of that. It's kind of, I'm going to place this right here on the table so there is like something on there. It felt like a really too much of an open space. And this, I guess, could be, since I moved this around, could be placed like right here. Okay, cool. So yeah, I've removed a ton of this kind of, uh, you know, very, location identifiable things aside from this map. And like I said, I'm gonna try and see if I can find a way to get the, uh, I, I remember some at one point, like I was looking in the world partition and this was showing, um, like it was showing the, the mini map. I can't remember how that was done, but um, even though it's not gonna be of, of use, though it might, not that I'm thinking of it. I'll, I'll, I'll take a look at this because I was, um, I, I had a plan a while back that I ended up scrapping about, um, uh, you know, helping with the, with the geolocation of an item but um, but this might prove to give me an idea. So so yeah, I'll probably try and revisit that. Okay, so a lot of these stuffs again are just generic things that I'm gonna um, decide whether to use the one from like the residential uh, uh, package or or these ones. These one look really dirty the other ones look really clean so I'm, i was hoping to find like a happy medium i'm not sure if this shader has like a um a way to set the amount of dirt if it did that would have been great but it looks like the texture is made in such a way that you can't uh that is not something they have control over so this is just how it looks so maybe starting with the clean ones and adding a little bit of wear through the shader, I think that's going to make it uh, make it work a little bit better. Okay. Uh, good. So let's see. We have this turned into like a non-generic. Uh, let's see. This stuff here, this is good. This is what I like sometimes when developers do it like this. You know, they have like just one, one, a one asset and not just a bunch of like the individual items. But uh, but again, 
uh, these are probably this asset is the one that's being used in here as well so turning this into a pack level actor should also should help quite a bit and um, so let's actually take a look at that because since we're here I'm, it might as well all right so right now let's just go into this lookout tower interior level All right, and there we go, we have the assets. Uh, they're all, the one thing that I don't wanna do is actually, I only wanna include like static meshes inside of the pack level actor. So we'll try it like this. I'm gonna create a backup of, uh, of this level. Interior. All right, so from here, so that's my backup. Let's go back into the main one. All right, so I'm gonna do is select everything aside from my, my uh, binoculars. Let me see if I got everything in there. I believe they're all static meshes. Just wanted to give it a quick check. Yeah, it looks like it. Uh, let me uncheck the, the blueprints. And maybe I should have just done it through here. So static mesh actor, select everything in here. I think that I got them all. Yeah, so everything, all of these, this should be a blueprint. Yeah, so that's a blueprint, okay, cool. So now that we have everything selected, just gonna right click and level, create pack level actor. Oh, and actually just for comparison, I just wanted to uh, uh, to, to give a quick look at uh, and see if this one, how much does this help? And just gonna write this down, the current stat, everything, actually everything deselected first. So we're looking at uh, about 1100 draw calls. You know, again, the draw calls are also accounting for all my tabs being open and uh, so, oh hey UD Arts, uh, can you please play? Yeah, I can. I can jump into game mode and uh, and, and show you what it is. Yeah, and just relax. I'm gonna do it right now. Uh, unless you're on a really time squeeze. Not sure where you're from, but uh, but yeah, if you're like if it's like late in the morning, I know like some people in the world are like really uh, really late. But I'm gonna do this first and then I jump into game. Uh, so, uh, to go, I'm not going to try and pronounce that. Uh, so it's a 1070. It's like one of those, uh, first 1070s, GTX 1070s. All right. So let me select all the static mesh actors and we said like about 1100 and I'm going to try and also focus the camera. So that is, uh, in the same spot. So about 1100. See if I go ahead and level pack level actor. So this one's going to be interior, just to separate them. It needs to create another level for whatever reason. And then this is our pack level actor here. All right, so now let's see what we got. This one should be, besides everything being just, you know, 10 actors now, uh, we're down to 920. So about, what, 200 draw calls drop? That's pretty good. I'm, I'm quite happy with that. All right, so let's go back. Um, this is in, just gonna go back in and uh, um, let me, open my 
main level here. Uh, UDRs, in your country, does web development have any scope? Uh, what, what do you mean? Like any future? All right, so now that we have this UDRs, let's jump into game. And now th this is, this is going to put you um, oh yeah, I mean, web development always has a future. It keeps on developing. So, um, yeah, it's not something that, uh, that I'm a fan of. I mean, it's just because, um, uh, I'm not a web developer. So I've done that in college, but after that I got into like, uh, object oriented programming and, you know, like Java. So I didn't kind of web development, I didn't get to have the time to spend on it. But um, but yeah, it definitely has a future in the world. Okay, uh, so this is, um, this is it. Let's see, let me just uh, go all the way back up to the top. Uh, of course, if you wanna see a little bit of combat, let me know. Uh, okay, so this one is also here. And, uh, oh, interesting. I should not be able to, I need to address the binoculars so you can only pick it up once and not pick it up multiple times. And so I'm just going to write myself a note uh, to not make that stack stackable. All right, so... Yeah, this is kind of how it looks in the interiors. And uh, of course, from the exteriors, this is actually a good good place to, uh, to kind of look at the map. Um, if uh, just to kind of look at it from a, from a higher positioning. And um, yeah, there we go. I should have... Let's see. Okay, so that's one. Uh, as you can see, now I have the binocular in my inventory. So the little, um, the little icon turns uh, turns green for the binocular, just to tell you that you have it in the inventory and uh, what number it's on, like what number it's assigned to. Even though it's not three, it's six. So uh, that's something I need to I need to fix. But um, but yeah, uh, let's put that away. And I also wanted to do a little bit of testing around kind of the collisions on these meshes and see if I go all the way to the edge. I'm actually floating a little bit, but okay, so I'm I'm definitely um I definitely reached the edge of it. But UDR, so let me show you a little bit of uh, combat as well, like you know, combat from the point of, you know, just, uh, you know, with the rifle and all. Let me see where my, uh, the start location is at here. And I believe I had some enemies spawned around here. Yes. All right, so let's uh, paste it here. Oh, not that, shoot. I need the player start. I hope this is the right one. Yeah, that's the right one. And that should be over there. And I wanna paste it here, there we go. All right, and let's also show some of the some of the other pieces in this world. And this is also a good example of kind of the that setting change that I've shown you. 
uh, where was that window world partition data let's load uh, some of these uh, other levels i might need to add some extra some extra loading data layers because uh, right now like everything else is is loaded so I'm, i didn't really want to have that but okay let's jump in but also another thing with uh uh, with with the world partition is the number of actors that are going to be loaded at any one time is depending on those grids. So, like you've seen, I have I had thirteen thousand actors, but right now there's only like fifty six hundred that are loaded because those are within within that grid area. And apparently, looks like the the house over here did not get loaded. Why is that? Uh, so UD Arts, it's a combination. Most of them are purchased. There are some that I've made because, you know, there was nothing like that or whatever was out there, you know, uh, did not look as I wanted it to. But yeah, a lot of them, uh, a lot of them I purchased. Like, hmm, what is going on? I'm not entirely sure why this uh, is not loaded. I'll have to look into that. But anyways, let's uh, let's grab a let's grab a rifle and uh, take care of some of these guys. And before I do that, again, this is one thing that I forgot to do, and I had it planned to do it this week, like the um, the weapon, you know, you know kind of pulling the weapon down when you're uh, um, when you're colliding with something, and unfortunately. The the procedural volumes they create this overlap event that apparently uh, I'm not really guarding against. So let's see these ones. I'm just gonna need to lift those up. Where is the pivot point? Right over there. Okay, so hopefully now, let's see. I'm hoping that the um, the gun is not going to collide with those volumes anymore. Let's see. Did I remove all the volumes? I think I might have. Looks like I did. All right, so just like usual. Oops, I think I'm actually shooting the vehicle. Uh, so that's a little bit of the combat. Pretty clunky just because of the poor frame rate in the editor. Um, but uh, and you know those those detection arrows should disappear once they're uh, you know the guys once these guys are you know taken care of uh, that's just something left to be done. But, um, but yeah, that's a little bit of uh, with the with the rifle. Let's see if I haven't tested the bow in a while. Let me see if the bow still works. That's a good uh, good test. Thank you for asking, UD Arts. Let me add the bow in here as well. And we'll see if this one still works. Uh, I have learned web development, like front end, HTML, React, back end. Oh, that's cool. That's really cool. Yeah, web development is still, I um i don't think it's it's gonna go away anytime soon so um uh, you know stem it's where it's at you know it's kind of unfortunately that's what it is uh if you want to find a job easy or you know easier um yeah you might want to go with stem so that's a good choice oh i forgot <laughs> the the as you can see, 
the arrow only made it up to here, so I need to, uh, I probably need to fix that. And I'm thinking like a little bit of a better way to determine if there's like multiple enemies that have detected you. Um, I need to make it so that uh, you can tell a little bit easier which ones, who's who. Because like right now, yeah, they're they're close together. So if they were a little bit farther apart, it might be a little bit easier to tell. But uh, right now they're kind of bunched up together. And that's why everything was so close. Oh, so AI will take the whole industry of web developers. Um, I mean, at this point, again, I am not, I am not close to the web development world. But I think at the moment, AI is still pretty far away from from taking over anybody's jobs yeah it's it's taking over i think what's going to take over is a lot of like the customer support jobs and um because that one that one has already been happening for a while uh and maybe content management jobs but um you know jobs that that um and probably a lot of writing jobs as well i think i think that might be um you know, like probably acting jobs as well and voice acting jobs, I think. Um, but um, it's it's probably just going to refocus a lot of these jobs, right? Because there's still going to be companies that are going to want to have a real actor or like a real voice actor for something. And um, that's why I think it's going to be difficult to uh for ai to replace everything you know there's a place for it definitely you know like for indie people like myself that cannot afford you know 100 hours per minute from a voice actor it's it's gonna help um you know but i think um you know jobs with like multiple moving parts you know like say web development right there's like there's like multiple moving parts to it. I think that's going to be a little bit harder to replace. At least that's my opinion. So, um, yeah, you'll be able to uh, ask ChatGPT for like a solution on on how to build something, but at the same time, I don't. I'm not sure how easy it's going to be, unless it's through like already an an existing platform. You know, like say. Um, say you want to build a website and you go through like those sites like Wix or what are the sites I'm thinking of that you can build a website. They probably use maybe some kind of prompts through like AI to to get you to understand better what you're trying to build. Uh, but then again, it's always going to look like a site that was built with Wix. <laughs> so I, like I said, I, I think I think you're safe for now. That's my opinion. Again, that's uh, uh, that's my opinion. All right, so there's one guy over there, and his is and this guy over here, and then where's the third guy? Uh, luckily, these guys can't shoot for at all, but uh, I suck at this. But um, yeah, I don't think, like I said, uh, my opinion is that uh, it's not going to happen. If it is, I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. Oh yeah, so the splatters came on on the back of these boxes. Uh, I kind of I kind of like that option, to be honest. And I think the other guy didn't spawn because I think the spawner was like through the map. Um, so a night scene, uh, it just adds the complexity of the gameplay, and I, I, that's why I didn't really want to add it. There's, like, more things to consider, you know, like the 
you know, limiting the vision of it. But what if it's on the lights? You know, the 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 enemy could see farther if it's under like a, um, uh, under like a, um, you know, like a, a light on one of these, you know, like a street light or something like that. So it just adds to the complexity. That's why I didn't want to. At least not at the moment. Yeah, there's no monsoon season in this game. <laughs> Uh, hey, Graal, welcome, welcome. Uh, no, this is just plain, uh, plain environment. Like you won't see in in a northern area with with trees like this, you won't see a monsoon. Um, okay, yes. Uh, so another thing, actually, uh, with with the current sale, uh, and this is something that uh, <laughs> is, is is awesome with with Epic. Uh, I also bought a couple of uh, a couple of um, like a, a package of decals, like a really I think it's like four bucks or something like that, and it's got like a lot of these like really nicely tessellated decals. So this is a decal, <laughs> like literally, this is just a decal. And uh, especially for my needs, I thought, oh, this is gonna be this is gonna be awesome. Uh, this is. Uh, uh, perfect for what I needed because I didn't want to have to create for some of these basement windows like just a separate asset and like you know place it and all that so uh, having having this as a decal was just perfect you know and uh, yeah it fits in fits in really nice and you, like if you look at it you know with the with the uh, parallax Parallax occlusion mapping, I believe, is what it's using. It, it just looks like it's a mesh. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, I have done uh, blueprints. So this is all done in blueprints here. Let's see, what did I want to select this one? Maybe place another one on this side of the... But yeah, for uh, and it's got it's got a bunch of these. It's this is not like the only, but this is the one that's mostly most use, uh, useful to me to some extent. There's there's quite a lot of quite a number of other ones in there uh, that uh, that are like that that are very useful. You know, like some vents and uh, so yeah. Let me see. Is there any any? This one doesn't have anything exposed, but. Uh, so that's fine. Uh, and blueprints easy than code. Uh, blueprints is. Uh, I mean, if you think about it, uh, everything else still applies. You know, when it comes to um, to to coding, you know, the same kind of principles. You know, kind of guiding ideas. But but yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot faster. It's uh, a lot easier to iterate, prototype things. Uh, I'm I'm sure it's you know some uh, there might be some considerations you know depending on the complexity of of the project as um, you know how how well it would, would it perform if it's like a really big project would it perform better with uh, C plus plus versus blueprints that's uh, that's you know definitely something to think about. There we go. It really looks like you were sinking something into that surface. <laughs> like, honestly. With these decals. Like, it really feels like there's, it's a, it's a 3D, 3D object. 
So, you know, there's a number of these. Uh, this is called like a solid decal pack, if anybody's interested. And um, you know, like this is another really good looking one. Let's see, am I having it disoriented the right way? Uh, no, it's actually you know facing down. So you know, it's uh it's really cool. But over here, I probably don't need one of those. Even like even like floor grates like this. Yeah, check that out. <laughs> it's pretty nice. Yeah, I guess thread carefully or is it just my material oh no this is a two-tone interesting let's see do some work better than others i'm guessing it doesn't overlap so well with certain materials but uh yeah that looks pretty cool let me see if I can tone down the this height. Yeah, so you don't want to go you you don't want to go too far with it, but uh, yeah, kind of cool from a decal. Uh, why you don't upload tutorials of Unreal and Blender? And uh, um, so I I did a few in uh, some time ago, but. Um, it is very time consuming. You know, a lot of people that do it, um, uh, they, they do it full time, you know, um, or, you know, they have a game project that they focus on full time. They don't have a, um, you know, they can focus on that full time. They don't have like another unrelated day job, you know. So at the end of the day, it's just uh, how, much, how much time do I have <laughs> uh, left in the day? And there's already enough experts out there that uh, have been making uh, these tutorials properly. You know, like they, uh, you know, they're they're good at teaching. I've a lot of the tutorials that I've made were for things that I either couldn't find out there um, that have been already done or have been done, but I didn't really understand them very well. So I thought, you know, let's I'll try and make one. You know, hopefully other people would 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 help them. Yeah, tomatoes. There you go. And um, so hopefully Matthew. Yeah, speaking of Matthew Wadstein, that's one of the one of the instructors out there. You know, he worked for Epic for a little bit um, until you know they had that um, that those massive lay 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 layoffs at uh, some some time ago. You know, they lay off a ton of people. And unfortunately, his position was one that was affected, and uh, uh, that's um, you know that's unfortunate. But hopefully, he'll be back to um, you know to creating some of these you know bite-sized tutorials for uh, for us. But again, it's it's really hard because you can't just live off of. I think you you need to be either have like some kind of a pa Patreon for like supporters or because um, you can't live just off of YouTube ads. Uh, my understanding is you, you have to get at least into like the high hundreds of thousands to somewhat live off of YouTube ads. And, let, uh, and you know, probably, you know, having sponsors throughout helps. But, um, but yeah. Yeah. Um,
What model are you using for the towns and dams? So Penguin Z, the town itself, uh, like all these buildings I've made myself, you know, like, you know, like these, this, you know, these buildings back here. This is actually, I haven't made this one. This is from a package called, uh, it was also free at one point. It's called Downtown West. I'm not sure if it's, if it's like a per permanent free package, but uh, these also I've made myself as these ones. Uh, yeah, so when it comes to the town, aside from the motel, the diner, this warehouse, and of course, you know, the cars. Um, and this one, so all the buildings I've made myself. The interiors are from kind of a variety of packages, what I've liked best and not. Uh, as far as the dam itself, uh, if you if you were asking about the dam, like this asset here, I've made this one myself. And this is kind of U UD Arts, uh, kind of going back to your question as to, uh, you know, stuff that I've made myself, stuff that I bought. Yeah, like I said, it's a combination of things. And um, so, yeah. Uh, the gas station is called, it's from a package called the Desert Gas Station. I believe it was also free at one point on the marketplace. <laughs> um, how much time does the game will take to complete? Uh, it's still quite a, uh, there's still some time to, to put into it. Um, so this is gonna be like a part one. Uh, of course, it's not gonna be like one of those part ones that uh, it, uh, it ends up uh, without giving you an idea that there's going to be a part two. So that's that, that's that's how I was planning on doing it. You know, kind of this being a part one, a smaller uh, part of the world, and then another like as a part two. Uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, uh, Udemy courses, that's another thing. But then I'm, I haven't heard of Stephen Ulibari. I'm not sure... If he's he's like a a, a U on unit Unreal Engine professional, like he's probably had worked on this in his 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 career and all that. Uh, so it's um, that's another thing, you know. It's if you want to make a course, you want to make it so that you know people would come back to it and not give you like some bad reviews of like you know that I paid like hundred bucks for this guy's course and it just sucks. And uh, yeah, that's that's what's difficult, right? This being a hobby for me, it's tough to become like professional like somebody like probably Steven is. <laughs> when you say diners, it reminded me of the show from. <laughs> yeah, cool. Uh, Penguin, can you tell me how those background on those sky cards are made? Yes, uh, of course. So if you're referring to uh, to this area back here, you know, like everything back in that area. That is actually a part of my sky blueprint. Um, so, and it looks like this. It's basically just a, uh, uh, hopefully let me open it separately. So it's just a cylinder. And also, I got this also from like a, I think like a free package or something. I think in the end, it's just this prog a project is somewhat of a Frankenstein when it comes to, to all the body parts. You know, like there's some of my body parts that I made, some parts from like, um, you know, I have, you know, marketplace assets. But yeah, this particular one is, is literally, if you can see, hopefully you can tell, it's uh, it's literally just a cylinder. And uh, the material applied to it is just a mask material that's got uh, this texture applied to it. And this is what I've uh, I was talking about earlier. I might need to go into it and kind of trim it up a little bit, you know, clean it up a little bit around. Because like when you look through the binoculars, some of these areas kind of jump jump at you a little bit. So I need to fix the fix the alpha a little bit. I'm assuming the alpha might be in this. And and again, this is a pretty small resolution, so I'm 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 kind of looking for something that might be a little bit better. But yeah, I think if you look at the alpha, 
uh, I definitely like this is a really good example of, of how the alpha is made you know, like kind of like the transparency going back there but I think if I try to overexposure this a little bit more there might be areas that are causing that uh, um, and it might be also due to the resolution of it being pretty small but uh, but yeah like this part here I couldn't see it in in the uh, in the alpha just looking at it but uh, yeah in this part over here I'm, I'm, I might want to trim that you know kind of soften that up a little bit uh, this particular one it is uh, I wish I could tell you oh, actually it's uh, where is it one second it's the motel huh cool yeah that's the one thing that I uh, um, that I couldn't recall uh, so it's from this uh, this motel package and I am not entirely sure what the name of it is on the marketplace bear with me for uh, for one second uh, hands off to you I want to sleep now yeah have a good night UD Arts uh, hopefully I'll see you on the next one uh, but um, so uh, the so yeah the package is uh, penguin the par package is called uh, the uh, motel but there is a couple of motel packages on the marketplace let me see if I can tell you exactly which one this is um, So this is oh, and it's actually on sale. Go figure. It's uh, it's this one here by Volodymyr Stepanyuk. I got I got quite a few, a few quite a few assets from him. These are these are really he, he's really talented. He's got some really good stuff. And this one is on sale. Uh, I think it's fifty percent off. Yeah, there you go. So penguin, hopefully that helps. Yes. Uh, so Imran, landscape mountains. Uh, what what exactly are you asking about the landscape mountains? The the la the landscape itself, like like the the height map, came from I believe. It's a desert hills landscape or something like that. So yeah. Uh thank yeah, I like here again looks I would replace the tan ground texture for something greener but oh thank you thank you so much. Um and if you're referring to um to this area back here like uh to I I know I I think I might I might know you were referring to like you mean like the contrast to, to give a little bit more contrast over here like to to the slopes of the mountains. Uh, I'm wondering if that's what you were referring to, but uh, I'm I'm definitely with you on that. It's uh it's just a kind of that's using like the mulch surface, but um, um, but yeah. Is it a good idea to do landscape in Gaia? And uh, I I I haven't used Gaia uh Gaia uh before I, I used world creator or what i can't remember world world machine i can't remember which one it was but uh but yeah you end up just with you end up with a height map so whichever tool you use it totally fine i'm not sure if you can if you do like you import the mesh or what you import from gaia but um yeah i i like world creator was a uh because I looked at some tutorials with Gaia, but World Creator seemed like a lot easier to use. Uh, just from the point of, you know, kind of the 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 nodes, it felt like, you know, a little bit like blueprints. <laughs> so very costly. I haven't looked at World Creator in forever. Um, yeah. And the distant mountain meshes, that's actually landscape. So besides uh, besides everything that you see back here, everything is just a lands just one landscape. So this one here is uh, just a landscape, one of the landscape pieces. Yeah, basically this one. Because you know, technically this is all navigable, but I wanted to have something 
back here in the in, in like the background that you know you're not you're never gonna be able to get to but at least is uh, you know there is something there you know it's just not empty so yeah Uh, okay, well, so I think um, we're up to uh, our usually for, for two hours, and uh, I usually kind of, that's how long I run the stream. Uh, Penguin, what was your inspiration for this map? It's very similar to this time. Uh, well, inspiration is um, Far Cry 5 and Days Gone. Definitely heavy inspiration from that. And... Um, you know, since, as with games, you know, of this, not of this size, because, you know, Far Cry 5 is much bigger, but you kind of, um, you kind of limiting, you have to limit the player in a way, right? So, the, in my, you know, like with, with Days Gone and Far Cry, every, every exit of the map, like in my case, for example, it'd be, he'd be down here, you know, Exiting from the map would be through some tunnels. And, um, you know, in the case of both Days Gone and uh, Don't Drink the Water. Uh, so both both with Days Gone and uh, Far Cry, you know, th there was like a collapsed tunnel or something like that. In my case, it's just going to be one of those uh, enemy vehicles that uh, kind of kill you on, on site you know, depending on their status, you know, like, so this enemy vehicle, uh, they usually, they, they would have like a turret on top and, uh, you know, depending on the state or the, and their location, they would, they would kill you on site. So basically you, you wouldn't be able to get past them. And that's, um, so I, I, cause I don't want it, I didn't want it to have it so that you literally know that you can't leave the map. And, you know, no, there's nothing past, so to speak, in some regards. But with this one, um, let's say you can kind of see the light at the end of the tunnel. You know, having this kind of badass vehicle, you know, stopping you from going anywhere. Yeah, you're not going to be able to leave the map, so to speak. But uh, you can see that, well, there's, it. This this vehicle came from somewhere, right? And that's one of the things that I didn't really like about Far Cry 5, you know. Like, has the cult moved into the area and then collapsed all the tunnels? And now they're just getting supplies via, like, helicopter and, like, airplanes? I mean, I, I guess it's possible. But, you know, there's all these tunnels. <laughs> so, hopefully that made sense. My, kind of my rant. I wouldn't call it a rant, but, you know, the, the way I'm, the way I'm, uh, thinking about uh, the, the map exits. But yes, Days Gone has a really nice game world. I, I definitely love it. It's uh, it, it's awesome. And uh, I do like kind of the northern type of forest, you know, like the pines. That's that's why I went, you know, I that's my kind of, uh, when it comes to vegetation, that's my, my favorite type of tree, so to speak. Yeah, okay. So guys, uh, thank you again so much for stopping by. I um, I hope tomorrow, uh, what I'm going to be doing probably this afternoon is, uh, you know, maybe go out for a walk, but uh, which is always good good for you. But um, I'm going to try and uh, kind of finish off some of these some of these meshes that I have for houses, and uh, and uh, maybe tomorrow we'll try and finish off a little bit more of this uh, this area around here. You know, kind of closed off because it looks unfinished. Yes. <laughs> so try and finish off some of this area, and maybe place a couple of more of these uh, of these houses and maybe some garages to kind of um, uh, towards the end of the uh, to, towards the exit of, of from from the town. You know, kind of if you think about it, you know, smaller buildings on the outskirts of the town. You know, bigger buildings towards the middle just like I, I have around here, you know, like a couple of bigger buildings out here, you know, some apartment buildings. And as you, as you move towards the exit of town, there's like just like a warehouse, you know, like a little diner, you know, on this side, it's kind of covered with some of these shacks. But, uh, but yeah, I also wanted to, uh, to, um, to, uh, 
create a couple of other smaller buildings to uh, to pad, let's say pad these this town area. And uh, yeah, so uh, again, thank you guys so much for stopping by, and uh, I I hope to see you tomorrow. I'll uh, again I'll post it I'll post it in Discord, and uh, you know just schedule it here. Uh, it might start a little earlier, maybe around 12 Eastern. So hopefully uh, maybe uh, uh, people in Asia might be able to join. I know it's you know <laughs> uh, midnight or past midnight, maybe 1 a.m. for them. So yeah. Uh, Y'all have a great rest of your Saturday or Sunday morning, and I'll see you tomorrow. Hey, take care, Atlantica. Take care, everybody. See you. I'll see you next time. All right. Goodbye.